out there, my name is Mark Granger and this is the second part of my review for the Notch Pro Access bag for treestuff.com. And after putting three weeks worth of mileage on this bag, I gotta say I couldn't be happier with it. I feel like the folks at Notch, the engineers really thought this out when they were making the bag. Starting with like, I've got a fully loaded bag, I'm pretty sure it's at least 100 pounds, I haven't weighed it. But the placement of these handles allows me to very easily grab the bag, pop it up onto a leg, swing it over the shoulder, and I'm ready to go. Now, with that said, this amount of weight, I wouldn't really want to go on a long hike with this, and in my first part of the review, I mentioned I'd really kind of like to see a hip belt. But after three weeks worth of work, I feel like throwing this in and out of the truck, that belt would likely just kind of be in the way. Um, so with what I'm actually doing is mostly carrying this thing 100 yards or so into a yard, and this is a very comfortable bag. I really like the distribution of the weight. I think one thing that I'll add to it, but I haven't got around to it, is just a little strap over the shoulders here to just more evenly distribute the load. Um, I purposely overloaded this bag today a little bit more than I would actually use on any given day. Um, I have elected not to put my helmet in here. I have a Protos and the uh, I feel like the visor just has a high likelihood of getting smashed if it was to stay in here too long. But for anybody out there for a helmet without a visor, you can probably stuff two helmets in the top of this bag. I've got a couple of throw cubes here at the top. Handsaw here on the outside for easy access. Um, harness. And what this has allowed me to do, um, at any given work site, I can kind of anticipate what gear I might need for a climb. I just go ahead and clip that into the top row so it's easy for my groundy to find it. Uh, for the most part, a lot of this stuff is really accessible uh, even when you have the bag closed. And I've tried three different ways of configuring this bag. At first, I was just flaking the rope directly into the bag. I've also tried bundling it, which gave me a lot of room. I've currently got a rope bag inside of this bag. And the only problem with that is that I can't get it out without opening this thing all the way. With that said, when I was just flaking the rope into the bag, one of the things I really like about it is that without having the weight in the middle, even with all this gear hanging around the outside, it still stands up perfectly like a bucket. Let's dig in here and take a look. Still at three weeks, I tend to fumble a little bit with these buckles and I'm sure I'll get better with that in time. But I really like the design and I really feel they'll hold up a lot better than some plastic snaps. In this bag, I have a 200 foot line, a 120 foot line, and a 60 foot line. Uh, again, probably more rope than I'm going to need. I'll probably sort out what I need at the start of the day before loading the bag up. I have to say that this is the most organized I've ever been. Previously, I was using a lot of bucket style rope bags and just kind of tossing a bunch of stuff in there or clipping onto the sides and invariably it just ends up being a hodgepodge of stuff. But here, everything has its own home. Uh, and like I said, I've kind of overloaded this bag. I've got multiple rope wrenches, multiple ascenders on this side. I've got uh, three different hitch climber pulleys, a whole bunch of pressics in here. I've got a speed line kit, a block, other stuff in this bag, uh, part of the bag. Um, literally, I have enough gear in these pockets to put four different people into the tree if they brought their own rope. Um, one thing that I anticipate over time with this is that like anything with the Velcro, um, we're working a pretty dirty job. I, I feel like this might break down over time, but they've thoughtfully placed those straps right across. As you can see here, we've got debris on it already. Um, these straps, I think, will, will hold together even if the Velcro starts to deteriorate. I do wonder with this, the 900 denier fabric is super bomber, super uh, uh, tough stuff. But I do wonder with how tight this fold is, over time, being exposed to sun, being exposed to the elements, if this will start to crack and break down here. But so far, this thing seems like it'll last me for years to come. I couldn't really be happier with it. Uh, up here, got a nice little zipper pouch, keys, wallet. Um, I've got some electrical tape, uh, a knife in there. Um, but really, I feel like there's more spaces to put things in this bag than I have gear for. And 
I'm excited to, to find other ways to configure this and I'm sure that as I check back in after a few months, we can see how this thing holds up. We can see maybe if I've become a little bit more um, efficient with the way that I've got my, my thing stashed in here. But one thing, just a quick rewind, rewind is that even when I was just flaking the rope into the bag, I can open this thing up and I think Nick Bonner called this kind of like the bathtub of the bag found that even if you're flaking loose rope in here, it stays really well contained when you flop this thing open. So it's it's really dealer's choice, however you feel like putting this stuff in here. But I really gotta say, I love the bag. Um, I'm excited to, to see how it holds up and excited to check back in with you in a few months. And until then, thanks for watching.